Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, with another little antenna tutorial uh, having to do with the directional patterns for a half-wave dipole antenna. This information comes from my upcoming book, Ham and Shortwave Radio, for the Electronics Hobbyist, due out in October of 2014. And a link to which I will a link to which I will place at the description of this video, so you can go to Amazon.com and pre-order it. Or if you're watching this video after October, order it. Here is Figure 7-6 from that book. In this is the chapter on antennas, and these are directional patterns that you might recognize as polar coordinate systems with zero degrees of azimuth at the top, then 30, 60, 90, representing east in this case because it is an H-plane view, meaning horizontal plane, looking straight down on the antenna, which is at the center, right here, and we're high, high above it. It's a half-wave dipole running north and south. Azimuth 0, azimuth 180, a horizontal straight wire half-wave dipole antenna. 90 degrees representing east, 270 representing west. As for the circles, the concentric circles, they represent relative gain. They are not calibrated in this drawing here. Now that's the case for both of these graphs, by the way. The circles represent relative gain. The outermost circle represents the highest gain that the antenna has. The next circle in from there represents six decibels down. From that, 12 decibels down. And this is in terms of RF field strength in volts per meter, as you might get with a field strength meter. 18 decibels down. 24 decibels down. And then from there, it's pretty much you can disregard what's inside of this innermost circle, and certainly the point at the center, 30 decibels down. It doesn't represent zero, but it's pretty doggone weak. So the maximum radiation from a dipole antenna running north and south is, as you would expect, towards the east and towards the west. And this pattern here indicates the relative intensity as a function of direction. So, say, in the 30 degree uh, direction, well actually now this is 60 degrees, 30 degrees would be halfway there. So these are kind of uh, 20, uh, no, th this is 60 degrees right here is east, northeast. The field strength would be where that heavy curve intersects that straight line. In the 30 degree azimuth direction, which would be north northeast, the field strength is where that heavy curve again intersects the 30 degree line. It's zero in an idealized situation going both north and south. So you can draw lines out from the center to the heavy curve to get an indication of how strong the signal is in in various directions. Now this graph, called an E-plane graph, that means elevation. E stands for elevation. So in effect, when you these negative values down here are under the ground, we're assuming that this antenna is one quarter of a wavelength above the ground a quarter of a wavelength above the ground. And when you have an antenna like that, a dipole like that, the maximum radiation, believe it or not, is straight up. Low angle radiation, 30 degrees, for example, is very, very poor, and that's in the maximum horizontal directions, east and west. So we're looking, say, straight north horizontally in this view right here, east is off towards the right, west is off towards the left, straight up. We don't get anything straight down because obviously the ground will prevent radio waves from propagating into the ground. And who's going to be under there listening for us anyway? And if you go to the antipode of the Earth, they're not going to hear any signal from you 
<laughs> through the earth, at least not on a frequency that we ham radio operators would normally use. So that's what an E-plane or elevation plane pattern looks like. And when you see directional patterns for antennas, you will usually see the H-plane and the E-plane. Sometimes they'll call this the V-plane, vertical plane. But when you're talking about an E-plane, you have to make sure you know where the wire is oriented relative to this graph. In this particular case here, the wire is oriented going east and west. If you run it north and south, it's going to look pretty much the same. This radiation pattern from a dipole antenna at a quarter wavelength up. If you place it higher up, then you start to get better low angle radiation. But at a quarter of a wavelength or less, now if you move that thing closer to the Earth than a quarter of a wavelength, you're going to start having loss. And that circle or that ellipse here is going to shrink and shrink until if you lay the antenna right on the ground, it will in the theoretical sense shrink to zero in the practical sense you can make an antenna communicate with people if it's lying right on the ground in the real world but then again too you can also make QSOs with a dummy load read more about this and unrelated topics in my book Ham and Shortwave Radio for the Electronics Hobbyist due out in October of 2014 Stan Jabalisco W1GV signing off for now saying 73 and so long.